this is the uh, off center chuck. Um, I have found out just here within the last two days that uh, they don't sell it anymore. But they now have a complete off center chuck. You don't need to have a, a, a Vic Mark or something like that. Um, and this, it's by the same company. And um, yeah, Woodworkers Emporium has it. It's, unfortunately, this was a hundred bucks. The complete one is 375. So it, obviously it's gonna be uh, a fairly, uh, it's, it's fairly pricely. Oh yeah, and there are other off-center chucks out there. Yeah, the, the British. Okay, because this one, it's really easy if you've got a, uh, a Vic Mark or that type that's got the, a dovetail. Okay, let's get this. Yeah, just a regular old screw chuck. Yeah, so I've just got a regular blank. I have a glue block on the back, uh, three or four millimeter, three sixteenths of an inch uh, drill, put it on the screw chuck. So the first thing I start, even though it's on the screw chuck, I like using tailstock just to uh, make sure it's good and stable. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is just Take it, I rough turned it to uh, as big as I can, you know, get on reasonably on, uh, on the, out of the blanket on the, on the lathe. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly turn this around. Okay, and then look at, uh, I normally put a mark on the, the face just so that I can uh, see how flat it is once I start turning this down, flatten the surface, and just use a uh, pull cut. Okay, right now I'm about 1500 RPM, uh, just a bowl gouge, nothing fancy. And not quite flat yet. And that's why I put the marks on it so I can uh, find out where the high spots are. So I need to pull up, do another pull cut. Okay, so the main thing is to get it nice and flat. Now, beading tool that I'm going to use is just a standard, three eighths beading tool. Now, if you really wanna get into it, you can turn them all by hand, but it's, uh, I'm not that good, <laughs> to be quite honest. And now people are going, a lot of people are gonna to wanna to take and just take it with like you, you'd use with a gouge with the flute up. Beading tool is just the opposite. Flute is down, put it on the lathe, drop the, get that out of the way, drop the handle, engage the, the tool to the wood and rotate it up. And so I'm just gonna, the motion's gonna be into the wood, up until I can see the entire, the, the entire bead formed. And just bam, like that. You, so you can sit here and turn beads all day and they're all gonna be the same.
Oh, I've got one of the robust tool rests, which is just the hard metal um, rod on the top of it. And, you know, this is, I, I just don't, I get used to that one. So it's nice and flat and uh, you can't put a gouge in it. I mean, if you damage that one, you've probably ruined your tool. <laughs>
and it's perfectly aligned dead center. I can go back to 12, I can go back to zero. You can go back and forth on this and you don't have to worry about marking something to try to get it back to the original position. That's the advantage of this chuck. That's one of the reasons I got it was that you can make a homemade chuck. As a matter of fact, John Armstrong demoed this several years back on how to do an off center by make, with making your own chuck. The biggest problem as Corel was just bringing up is you've got to really mark it so that if you need to go back to zero, you know where that zero point is. On this one, you just take the number back to zero. And as a matter of fact, I'll show that later on. Now, it's at 12 millimeters. I don't know if you can see real well, that is really off center now. So in my notes, there's a big note. Keep your hands on this side of the tool rest. Otherwise, you're gonna get whacked, exactly. Okay, so I take the speed all the way down, turn it on, stand out of the way. And I normally will put a, my hand on it and bring it up until I can, well, here you can see the light. I'll say this, my lay of the home is obviously, uh, well, also mine's not on wheels. And that's the problem with this one. You can't bring it up. I'm only up to less than 340 RPM and it's still shaking like mad. Okay, now I'm gonna just start going in here, make sure I'm lined up, start going in. Also decide how big you wanna go. Now, obviously on this one, I'm gonna to wanna to go out and on the, the widest section to make the bowl all the way out here. So you're gonna to have to turn it on and off until you can find out exactly where you wanna go. Make sure, seeing that you're gonna be cutting across these beads, make sure you've got this up against your body so you've got it really well supported. I would prefer this to be closer to a thousand RPM, but- uh, The question was, uh, oh, yeah. is that Chuck rated for a specific RPM? I think I remember seeing that somewhere. And to be quite honest, what's gonna limit it is what your lathe can turn it at. Because with a 12 millimeter offset, as you can see, it's really moving this at only 340 RPM. Yeah, John just asked about going to the next harmonic and smoothing it out. Yeah, that's a good suggestion, John. Because I'm now up to 680 RPM and I like that a lot better. Thank you, John. Okay, now I'm in these beads. So you gotta be careful when you're going into the wood that you don't, it's gonna wanna try to pull back towards you. So you gotta be really careful on that. So that's why it's very important to be well braced. Oh, I like that so much better. There, 700 RPM. Okay, I'm gonna do some pole cuts just to start pulling this back. Okay, yeah, now I'm just trying to bulk remove material. That's almost exactly where, see, I, mean, I got one, two, three, four, six, seven, I got eight beads. I think I would take and pull that back just for my own personal likes a little further. We'll ride the bevel around the corner. And as John was saying earlier, if you got a good sharp tool with decent technique, you can really cut that even in poplar. Very, 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 very smooth. Now, one of the things I'm, I'm gonna do first, as a matter of fact, I'm glad I made the mistake because now I can show you. I'm gonna take and thin this out. I should have done that first. So now all I do is take this back. Oh, is it eight millimeter? How did I get there? Okay, I can go back to zero. 
tighten it down and now you'll see it's running true. So that's the, the beauty of, of uh, having a dedicated uh, check for doing off center turning. But as, it's, as I said, it comes at a price. By thinning this down, it's gonna help the bouncing at the different RPM. Okay, I'm just gonna take some of the back off here. And I do this after I cut the beads in case I mess up one of these beads and I've got to take and plane it off. If I would have already turned this down to the thickness, if I'd have made a mistake, wood would be tossed. Again, don't ask me how I know that. And the reason I need to do this is Once I start turning this bowl, you got to be careful on the narrow end that you don't make a funnel because you're going to have a lot of meat on this side. You're not going to have much meat on this side. I want to take and leave about a six seven inch flat on the back. I'm not gonna take the time to turn this entire OG. So I wanna spend the time with the, uh, with the dyeing, but I'm gonna take and set this back, back to the 12 millimeter. And again, that's the beauty of this thing. It is repeatable. Remember to take and ride your bevel. Yeah, there we go. Once you get this cut back here, as I said, you got small here, you got a lot of meat here, so you got to be very cognizant of your thickness right here. And I take that down to about three eighths, three eighths of an inch. And I'm about three eighths of an inch right now. Matter of fact, I'm almost dead, dead on three eighths of an inch right there. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna take this off. Again, I would sand this whole thing, sand the inside. I would take and put a sealer. I use um, a spit coat of uh, shellac, the white shellac, and uh, just to seal it enough so that I can do the dyeing. The back is going to be on center the front of the bowl is offset, at least the way I do it. You could take and turn them both that way, but I chose to keep this rim the same on the back all the way around. And so that's why I said it was so important to check the thickness at your thinnest point, which is here. Over here, it's gonna be way, way, way th thicker. So if you're, you're measuring here, you're soon gonna run out of wood on the third, uh, the thin side. Question on the sealer. I, this, the amount of sealer I use, I'll take a quart jar, I put about that much of the extra blonde shellac flakes at the bottom and fill it full of, fill it full of alcohol. So it is a very, very weak uh, mixture of shellac. Yeah, because you wouldn't want to take and put like a three pound cut shellac on it, dye wood and soak in. Okay, Spence was just saying it's about 10 to one. Again, I, I did it the Ed Jones way. Yeah, put about <laughs> that much shellac uh, flake at the bottom, extra blonde. And it's the same type of uh, sealer I use when I'm using CA glue on uh, cracks, or filling cracks, just to keep the CA glue from getting too far in and staining the wood. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there. I'm going to take this one off. Now the risk I make of taking this off, next time I put it on, it might not be quite centered perfectly. Okay, so here's one where it's, 
it's all done, all sanded. And again, I'm here at three eighths of an inch on the, the thinnest part. Okay, yeah, three eighths of an inch here at the thinnest part. If you notice, I always stand out of the way before, when I start up the lathe, just in case. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the, into the, the dying part. Okay, now comes the messy part. And to make sure I don't mess up the club lathe, I've made this for my lathe at home just to uh, minimize getting the dye all over the place. See, it's a little, little bit different. So, because you can get dye all over the place. Now, the other thing I do, okay, I'm going to use artisan dyes from Craft Supply. They're alcohol base. I've got the yellow, orange, red, and black. Now on this side, I want the dyeing to be centered on the center of the bowl. So I'm gonna keep this at the 12 millimeter. And the fancy, the fancy airbrush that I'm gonna use is this. This goes down into the die. And this part, you have to blow on. Basically just a, a vernier. So just make sure you exhale into this thing. Don't inhale. <laughs> it would be a nasty surprise real quick. Put a piece of plastic tubing onto this end and keep your face further away. That's an excellent idea. I had not thought of that. Very good. Okay, as I said, these are just regular old artisan craft supply dyes. Um, I have sealed this with that spit coat and I've re-sanded it. Um, I mean, I sand it started with 400 because it will raise this alcohol spit coat will raise the grain just a little bit. Again, it's just the standard artesian um, dyes from craft supply. So I'm gonna take this down. Don't need this going very fast, especially seeing you're gonna be so close to it, I'm about 240 RPM. Now, this is not a precision uh, instrument, needless to say. And it works just works very well for this, especially if you don't mind a little splatter from the other ones, you know, from the other dyes. And as far as I'm concerned, that just gives a little character to it. Now you can uh, adjust this by moving this tube up and down just a little bit, twist it, it'll move up and down so that you can get either finer or coarser, coarser spray. And the whole idea on this is I'll start with the yellow, let it dry just for a few seconds, then do the orange, red, and then black just out the very end. If you saw the picture that was sent out, you'd get an idea of what it what it'll look like. You can take it spray out as far as you want because you're gonna, the other dyes are gonna go over it. Okay, now one of the things you, you need to, you don't need to really clean this out much because I go from the light color to the dark. But what I like to do, I've got a little denatured alcohol here. Just clean it out a little bit. Yeah, Phil just asked if I could go back to the zero setting on the chuck and just do the black on the outside. I, again, personal preference, like to leave it this way because it accents the off center. 
but yeah, you could easily set that to zero and uh, just do the outside. Matter of fact, let's do that. What the heck? Um, but yeah, John just brought up, if you go back to center, be careful if you go too far with the black, you're gonna lose the red and everything else. Very good point, John. Gary, we have an online question. Yes. Can you reapply a yellow or orange color if it was covered up by the red? No. Okay. No, once you, you've got to go from the light color to the dark color. If you take and mess anything up at this point, you can't go back unless you start taking everything off. John? Yeah. What John had just said that at this point, you could go back, resand everything, or return if you really, depending on how, how far the die went in, and, um, and then start over again. But you'd have to start over again. If you've got to go back to the yellow, you're, you're starting over. Yes, John just said, if you wanted to take and deepen the yellow tone, or really the same with any of the colors, you could go, apply the dye over what you've already done. But if you, let's say you ran the orange way too far in, then you couldn't. Then you'd have to sand and start over. If you added some Tigon tubing onto the end of this so your face would be further away, as John just said, you probably have to blow harder because of the pressure drop through it. So you'd want to keep it short. You wouldn't want to put two feet on it because uh, then you, you'd probably run out of wind real quick. Okay, now what I would do next, well, let me show you what I do. I can get rid of this for the time being. And of course, being a uh, alcohol-based, this is all dry. Would not be a problem. So. Once you're happy with what you've done with the dye, I would take this off, take the chuck off, take this chuck off. Then it's time to bring out the jumbo jaws. I am a big fan of vacuum chucks, but because this being off center, If I tried to put this in a vacuum check this way, I'd want to center on the, the off center. At this point, I want to finish turning the back and then dye it. So can't do that. I would first put either plastic or paper towels on this because once you start dyeing towards the outside, you're going to get it all over your chuck. If you don't care about that, then that's fine. So yeah, put it in the jumbo jaws. It's back on center. I would bring in the tailstock because I, I don't trust the, uh, this to stay in there, uh, especially if you start pushing across the, the grain of the wood. If you're pushing straight in, it's not a, a big deal. At this point, I would turn this off, finish, turning the base, do whatever you're going to do with the base. Again, seal it. And then in this case, again, a personal preference, I want the dyes to be centered on the bottom. So I would start with the yellow, orange, red, and black. And keep a mental image of what the other side look, looks like, or take a picture of it. And try to keep it the same ratio. You know, if you've only got black an inch on that side, try to get a, the black an inch on this side, just so that it, again, personal preference. So that they look, when somebody looks at it, they look at the front, they look at the back. It's going to be the same, roughly. Any questions on the dyeing? Finish. <laughs> I'm a poly guy. So I would, uh, 
go with the poly. I would not go with anything that's alcohol base because if you go and put a, a uh, anything that's alcohol base, it's probably gonna mess up the dye. So stick with uh, poly, um, lacquer, you know, something like that. Don't try to finish this with shellac. Uh, the question was, if you're mixing, going like from an alcohol base to the poly or lacquer, I have not noticed a, a, a difference of any reaction between the chemicals. John had just said the only time he has seen a problem is if you use a thin down poly as a sealer and then put lacquer over top of it. He said, then you could you can have a, a reaction. Phil Brown just said, if you have, if you're using a, an acrylic dye, then if you put lacquer over top of it, you'll actually get a, a crackle surface, which might be fine. <laughs> yeah, Phil Brown was just saying the art store does have something that you can spray over a acrylic, then you can put anything over top of it. You know? If you start with lacquer, you can put anything on the lacquer, but don't try to alternate. Gary, we have another question yes. from, the audience, uh, from online. How do you keep in mind that there's a thin wall on one side of the bowl? There's no way to measure the wall thickness. Yes, there is. So what, what the question was about, like right here, it's three eighths. Here, it is much, much thinner. And that's why I was saying before, when you're turning the bowl, you've got to keep an eye on this thin section. And see, in this case, it's down to a quarter inch. On the thick side, it's an inch. So you got to be very cognizant when you're turning the off center bowl that you keep measuring the thickness at the thinnest part. And as long as you keep doing that, you don't have a problem. As I said, this one's a quarter inch. So, so Gary, I think the problem is when you turn it around to the back, how do you keep track of the thickness? Oh. I've already turned the back. This part is, all, I don't touch this. I've already turned the OG when I had it like this on the chuck. Okay. So I just turned that. And then this one, I'm just blending in this flat section. Good question. Yeah, because that's why you want to turn the OG, get this all done and get it sanded so you don't touch it again later on because you're right if you start messing around with this surface here you're flying blind good 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 comment any final questions thank you very much gary one comment to possible future demos when you bring your notes read them <laughs> that's how i got messed up and was turning the ball before I finished the OG. No to demo, <laughs> demonstrate. <laughs>